What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Today, I'm joined by Ian and Nick. They got top oh. eight and top four, respectfully, in the uh, Salt Lake City regionals that happened this past weekend in the Masters Division. They both played an Inteleon Dark Arceus V-Star deck, 59 cards, one card off of each other. Um, so we're going to be talking about that deck and uh, their really great performances, but also... Uh, kind of how they were viewing the metagame going forward, uh, or going into the event, uh, how they picked that deck, how they built that deck, their tournament performance, and then where to go from here with the metagame and with the upcoming standard format events. I think this is all really helpful information, so if they were thinking things going into the event and you were thinking something completely different and they ended up being right, you can learn from these players that saw success and try to adapt your metagaming um strategies so uh ian and then nick why don't you guys introduce yourselves all right i'm uh ian rob i've been playing for since like 2007 i have some decent results i'll say not that good of a player but i've been playing for a while so i guess it builds up at, over time and i got a uh, top eight after i played horribly in games two and three and you've got a regional champion win in masters right yeah i got a couple three, no uh, yeah nothing Epic. oh come on <laughs> come on all right nicholas <laughs> all right i'm nick moffitt i'm a sophomore at cornell i've been playing pokemon since i was 10 so like 2012 2013 uh took a few breaks here and there but just got top four at salt lake um and hoping to I think i'm at like 460 points now so hoping to close out my invite soon and, and just have fun playing pokemon yeah for sure and i definitely think ian rob is uh, Ian, you're a great player, but you're also one of those players that I think have gone under the radar of being like a top performer. Yes. Um, you don't really, you haven't put yourself out there as much in the past. No, like you're not a YouTuber no. or anything like that, or a team person. And then Nick, I know you've, like you said, you've taken breaks and there, I think one year, did you, or you weren't able to go to worlds, even if you got your invite or something yeah, so or we're talking I think about I got qualified four times but only got to play three right yeah so yeah, i had a wedding in england that yeah I that, and that was 2019 right that you didn't get to play the last worlds so. that happened yeah so. so two great players here with me today um who are now a little bit more on the radar i think than they've ever been before with this recent big finish at the tournament that everybody had their eyes on because it was the first one back um, so I know you guys are really good at what you do, and I'm happy to talk to you guys about the decks today. Uh, real quick before we get into it, I forgot to shout out my sponsors, but when we started, so Potown Store, if you need PTCGO codes, Card Trooper for physical product, PokemonCard.io for sharing lists and viewing lists, and Beast Coast Pokemon for collaborative Pokemon content. You can find all of that in the description down below. Also, subscribe to this channel, um, and if Ian and Nick want their Twitter shared, I can put those in the description as well. Um, so what we're going to start out with today is, uh, I guess we'll go Nick first. Nick, what were you thinking about Brilliant Stars standard format and metagame the, when you first sat down to prepare for it? Yeah, so I thought um, RCS is really strong, but like everyone thought Mew was going to be the most inherently powerful deck and the most played one because of that, um, and that people are going to try to counter it. Okay, so when did you start preparing, Nick? Did you like before the set was on PTCGO or after? I have I actually own none of the cards online, so I just like print out proxies and right. put those against myself. Really. Yep. Um, but so I made like this really bad Suicune, Moltres, Zapdos, Arceus deck, um, and it was just really inconsistent. So I actually didn't have anything uh, good until the week before Salt Lake City. All right, how about you, Ian? Uh, so going in, I really thought Arceus was going to be a bad deck and Mew was going to be incredibly dominant. So I was mostly preparing for that. Just Mew being everywhere and just basically being every deck else mm. that isn't Mew and just preparing to play Mirrors. Okay, yeah, and uh, I we still have not gotten the day one meta shares. I thought we would since they're on Arcanine, so hopefully we will eventually. But I had guessed that Mew would be somewhere between 25 and 35% of day one just because every top player's per, like opinion was it's either the deck to beat or the deck that will beat you um like you have to yeah. play this deck or beat the deck kind of um so did you guys how many um use did you face in your day one if you remember i faced one that was it how about you Nick? weirdly enough 
I played four day one and then one on day two. Okay. Um. So was it a surprise to you guys that Mew did not make top eight of SLC? Uh, yes, that was a huge surprise to me. I, I think the reason why, I'll go more in depth later because I think it's really interesting, but I think Mew is still the best second format. Mm -hmm. It was just a very weird event. Okay. I thought like two would make top eight, but it went wouldn't win. Yeah. Going yeah, I was I was pretty strong about that myself. I considered Mew not to be a deck that you play if you want to win the whole event. Um and I know other people felt differently just because they saw Natalie take down Brisbane. But I feel like there was um I feel like with the player base in Australia being smaller, that that high level of skill that people like Natalie and Kaiwin have wasn't necessarily matched by a whole other group of people like it is in North America. Like sure, sure. you have like multiple different groups of really high skilled yeah. players where in Australia it's gonna be a little lower just because there's less people. Um so you started working with this deck about a week out of SLC, Nick. Um how'd you yeah, start with so that? I saw the results from Brisbane and I saw Peter Lowe's third place list. Hmm. And I was practicing with that against Mew. And so basically, I think the list that we came up with uh, was five cards, ended up being five cards different from that. So the first cut I made was like uh, just a dark energy for an energy search because I was like, we're playing Inteleon, why are we not playing multiple energy search? And then I had never, I never used Hoopa. So I was like, okay, this card's coming out and I'm putting in Zapdos. Mm -hmm. And then I think the only other change. Yeah, so then the Zapdos fighting package came in and then against Arceus, you really needed the Cape of Toughness for it to be able to survive and take two knockouts. Yeah. Um, and that would just win you the game. And I think people I started catching on to that one a little too late yeah. to test it. Because, like, yeah. um, I think yeah. Bradner mentioned it in my meta discussion, um, which I think we, like, recorded Tuesday and came out Wednesday or something. So, like, if people were already, like, kind of concrete on their lists, like the Cape of Toughness Zapdos might not be something that they were ready to commit to yeah, for sure. the event. Sure. So yeah, then that list I shipped to Ian, and then I think the only changes with it from there, I cut a quick shooting Inteleon for a second, Shady Dealings Inteleon, and he cut it for Palpad. Palpad. And right. that was yes. the final list. Yeah. So uh, what was your testing like with the deck? How did you decide that it was good? Did you theory everything, or did you play physical games? I personally, I only tested against Mew, because mm. the day before, because I just want to try the matchup. I was going about 50-50. By side, I just didn't want to play Mew, so I just went with it. Okay. Yeah, I had tested it a lot, like the week leading up, and then, like I said, I sent the, the list to Ian, and it was like, "This is really good. We should play this." Right. Um, yeah. So, did you think and that was all? That was, sorry, and all that testing was just me against myself, like right using proxy. Yeah. Right. Um. So, did you think it? Because this is a question a lot of people have. People are wondering, did players like you guys not play Mew because? wanted to be different did you think Mew was boring or did you really just not think it was the best deck to play i played it didn't play Mew because i just thought it was boring like i still think Mew's the best second format but it's just i did not play mirrors all day and basically play 50 50 matchups right. at least that's how i see it yeah. i don't know if if being better in Mew mirror matters as much i haven't played enough games to decide that but in my head at least going to the event with not a lot of testing it didn't make sense to me playing Mew when I knew I'd be worse than other players. So I might as well find a different advantage. Um, for me, I just hadn't texted the mirror at all, and I also thought I had a deck that beat it. So I said nice. play this. Yeah, it, having a deck that you think beats 30% of the field or more, especially when all 30% of those players can't possibly all be at like the same skill level, right? Like some of them are going to be new players, some average, some great. Um, and so you'll have a matchup advantage plus a skill difference in those matchups yeah i will say the matchup is close if they play often. they play really really well yeah um yeah. something i think i think Mew's favored if they play correctly i disagree but that's <laughs> <laughs> i've played i went two three versus my mom in testing she's never touched me before it was me explaining to her so <laughs> i just wanted to keep let people hear that because i do not think the matchup is good i just expect that new players have no clue how to play it now I, i'll say i do not think it's that good now people actually know it can prepare for the deck because there's a lot of things you can do. I think that's a big thing about most of SLC is that everyone was used to online events and having their opponent's deck list on their second monitor. And this is completely different. 
So like a deck like you, your some of your opponents probably didn't know if you were playing 4-3 Arceus, 2-2 two, two Arceus, or what. Like they could have seen Intel and Moltres and think, okay, I'm against Dark Box, and then turn two, you drop Arceus DTE, right? Like um the Galarian Zapdos could have stayed hidden. They don't know if you're playing Path to the Peak. Um, you know, they don't know what's coming out of the board. The same way people were surprised by Finnegan's uh cross switchers. Um so do you guys think a deck like this is kind of like stale going into the next major event and now you have to find the next toolbox deck to surprise people? I still think, I still think a deck is can be good. It's just that it needs to be retooled more than anything. Because there's a lot of situations where, you know, people not knowing cards and stuff helps. I mean, now the deck list is out. Mm -hmm. It needs to get retooled for a new metagame. And the tech cards have to be changed. Just keep people on their toes. Right. Yeah, I'm probably gonna say play the same thing for EUIC. I mean, I haven't looked at the list. I I can't I haven't come up with any changes I want to make yet. Um, just because I feel the list is so nice, I feel like it is hard to readjust things. But I think the list is still strong against the expected meta, and I don't think you need the surprise factor to win games because you can set up situations where you're just guaranteed to win, and it really doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, Nick, what was the hardest match you played all weekend? Uh, definitely my top four match against Finnegan. Okay. But I looked back on it um a few hours ago and I realized I, I kind of threw games one and three. Um, but they were kind of subtle things. Okay. That yeah. But at, but looking back it was obvious. Like in the moment I didn't think about it at all. But So do you yeah. think that's the kind of like so one thing I was talking about in some videos and like obviously I'm sure a lot of groups talked about this and my group talked about it a lot, like we didn't want to play Mew. Because everybody for the past month has been practicing whatever deck they were going to play against Mew. Against Mew, yeah. For so sure. nobody yeah. practiced against Suicune Ludicolo. Yeah. Right. Sure like, no one did. like nobody even looked at Suicune Ludicolo as a meta deck, which was an advantage Finn had. The same way you guys have this deck that nobody can create the sixty cards because they don't know what you're playing. Um. Yeah. So do you think if you had practiced against just any Suicune Ludicolo player? like five games the week before do you think your match against finn might have went differently or was it his specific list that made these misplays happen i don't think so because yeah so so game one it was i didn't know about echoing horn and i could have just clawed back my your galarian uh, zapdos v was it no it was the rcs in the discard okay clawed back because he went bought he went uh um like horn boss Sorry. echoing horn cross switcher it was right cross switcher because i i had played it so you know even with choice band ludicolo he couldn't get the one shot on my active um uh, but yeah so i would have benched one let I, I think yeah i would have had to bench one last guy too because even he could have had the choice band combo the matchup is definitely tough yeah and then game three i had cape in hand mm -hmm. and i just assumed my zapdos was knocked out so i was like okay i can quick ball this away but Cape on Zapdos would have actually, sorry, not Zapdos, uh, Baby Moltres would have made it live. And yes. Have, he, would have, he wouldn't have had any answer because he, did, he didn't have a low tad in play. I, I remember that because uh, I I, we saw that on stream. Um, yeah, I didn't I didn't even realize until I went back and watched it earlier. Right, I, I actually, um, I was, me and my mom were watching it and she said he quick balled away Cape. And I said, I'm pretty sure he assumed that baby Moltres is knocked out because it's always just knocked yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, that one would have yeah, got me I too. Think I think that game I actually had, even though I went down three prizes and had an awful hand. Like, so yeah. I don't think the matchup is bad by any means. And right. if I practice it more, I think it would help. But I think it would have to be against his exact list. How about you, valuable. Ian? What was your hardest match? Uh, I think probably my top eight match not top eight match that wasn't hard it was more mean being bad i guess but i think round 12 against rcs mount or v max because mm. i had no clue was in their deck or what to expect and um i prized my zapdos v game too so it made it really hard but i was able to correctly navigate it against a deck i didn't really understand so it was a really hard match to uh think about i think i played correctly so i was able to win 2-0 but so really hard because i had no clue what was going on Mm -hmm. um yeah my only other loss uh in the tournament was actually also against uh RCS RCS Malamar. <laughs> Malamar, and that was because 
Uh, well, game two I just bricked, but game one I had training court in play, and I forgot to use it. And I think I had the game secured if I had done that. So, like, uh, training court, okay, and then next turn you'd have enough energy for Galarian Moltres, or...? For Zapdos, uh, just to attack with Arceus. Okay. Because I went in first with Zapdos, because he benched a ton of Vs, so I just knocked out his active uh, Arceus that he had used to Trinity Charge to Malamar. And then Malabar can't one-shot Zapdos, but then I needed to p manually power up an Arceus on the bench, and I forgot to train in court to be able to do that. Got it. Side note, um, what do you guys think about Arceus Malamar VMAX? Because I, I, it was something I played uh, a bit just because, you know, I'm a content creator, so I try to, like, see, hey, this looks cool. Let's put it in some videos. Um, too slow. Too slow? I think it's mid about it's, it's too slow. Like, you rather just play Gengar because it's a two-energy attacker. Right. They can just use Raihan. So I'm using yeah. a three energy dark attacker, even though it's worse against like Zapdos and stuff. Uh Gengar is just too slow. Malware having a three energy attack that you can't power up in one turn. Raihan. Yeah. I would never play the deck. I was wondering if uh you guys thought it became a little more viable just because people will counter Gengar with fighting stuff, but Yeah, I actually it thought it had fighting with this. But it doesn't. It's grass. Yeah, grass week. It's grass. Yeah, going into the match, I was like, oh, this is so free. It just zapped us. You can't one shot. But <laughs> they, they actually are grass week to grass. But it was still fine. I just I just made a simple mistake that cost me the game. Cool. Uh, so, talking about some of the other decks that made top eight, um, the Arceus and Teleon was the most popular Arceus variant of the day. Whereas I, I would. Uh, yeah, and I, I wouldn't really call your guys' deck Arceus and Teleon. Yours guys is kind of like. Off on its own side, some kind of toolbox yeah. variant. Uh, but the straight Arceus that uh, Xander Perot, Bradner Rahul, them yeah. played. Um, so what do you guys think of that deck? Do you think that your deck and straight Arceus both exist at the same time as separate decks? Or do you think one is just yeah. inherently better? Yeah. They're both think... separate decks with different... Sorry, you can go. No, you go ahead. All right. uh, I think they're both very separate decks with different goals. And try to attack different parts of the meta. Not only like different parts, but like try and do different things. Where a Taurus and Italian deck is a path Martin deck versus Mew. While the deck we're playing the more like dark Italian deck is meant to trade prizes with Mew instead of just going Marty path or path Sydney and try and break the Mew player. Yeah, it's definitely a very different deck. Um I don't think that deck is a regional winning deck though it's very good but i don't think it could win a regional necessarily so do you think if uh, uh who did you hit in top eight ian good. uh can the player one what's his drew? name uh, drew kennett hmm. yeah okay so how did that matchup go i uh i know you said you played you a little poorly right I can't really remember. Game one, he bricked. Okay. And game two, he bricked. So I won game one because he dead drew. Game two, he also dead drew, but I couldn't be attacking Arceus V, which just tells me I messed up somewhere. Because I remember having access to Drizzles and Talions. So like I had access to my deck. So I, I blanked. That's just gone from my memory because I, I just remember I'm like, I had the tools to win this and I just didn't do it right. And in game three, I was in a similar position where I was trading prizes with him, but I think I made an error or two. So you end up winning the prize trade in the end because I prized my pal pad and couldn't get a boss KO. It's a little unlucky, but I could have played better and play around it. So like, there's no one to blame but myself. Okay. So, uh, and Nick, uh, you played against who'd you play against in top eight? In top eight was versus Gabe Smart on Gengar. Okay, so, so Houndoom Gengar one, one, and then, huh? Houndoom Gengar variant. Yeah, so I, I went draw pass game one, and then games two and three were close, but it's usually close, but like I have the game secured, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so it looks close, it looks and, close then, in prizes, and then if you have it on the final turn, well. you just get it. Yeah, and that's kind of why I, I want to call the deck like Arceus Checkmate, because it seems a lot of the time like, you know, you're setting up positions where, you know, it's a close game, but you, ha you have 100% chance of winning, or like close to it. Right, as long as you play the perfect line. Yeah, which um, you have to. So, I would not, this is another thing. I wouldn't recommend the deck um, if you're not going to be able to play it close to optimally. Right, because... so don't pick it the night before the tournament, maybe. <laughs> no. Hey, I did, I mean, top eight, so maybe. <laughs> yeah, but you're also Ian Rob, so. I mean, I'll say, throughout the tournament, I was saying, I am playing horribly, and I'm making this plays, and the deck still felt so good. Because yeah, he just attached energy to a Moltres V, because I kept hitting fighting decks. 
Well, you might have also had some of the surprise factor on your side helping yeah. you out if you uh, were playing as horribly as you say, but you might also yeah. just be hard uh, on yourself. <laughs> maybe, maybe I might, maybe. I don't know. I yeah. made some egregious plays. <laughs> um. So, <laughs> Nick, Sorry. I'll go ahead. I was going to say, I think moving forward, because it doesn't have the surprise factor, you really do have to play optimally to win games. Yeah. I think the same about Finn's deck. I don't think you could just copy oh, yeah, that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um... So if you had beaten Finn, do you think you had a good matchup for finals? I think so. They do have the Scrapper, which makes it tough. That's the only card that I would be worried about, really. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it seemed fun. Okay, In theory, cool. I haven't tested it yet or anything. Right. No, the matchup is good. I just played bad. I was just yeah. wondering because you said you didn't think Arceus and Teleon would have won the regional, so or was a regional winning deck, or like a deck yeah. you would plan to play if you want to only win. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to just get a little bit of clarity. Did you think your deck could win the regional? Yes, 100%. If I hadn't misplayed in top four, yes. Or hadn't bricked game three, I mean. And even then, I had the game not necessarily guaranteed win, but I think I would have been okay had I not had I attached the Cape of Helpness in game three. Cool. Or not prized Raihan or like there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so moving forward now, what do you think happens to the metagame in general? So you didn't make top eight. Um Gengar Arceus won, which was a rogue deck prior to the weekend and is now probably going to be considered a meta deck going past this weekend. Uh and now we just have two separate Gengar uh variants in the metagame. Uh we also have your guys' deck that was not a deck prior to the weekend and now now yeah. it is um and then we have a new build of arc and Teleon, so a lot of new stuff coming out suicune re-entering the meta there's going to be copycat people playing that probably um so we have liverpool coming up and then sao paulo regionals coming up and then euic um regardless if you guys are attending any of this stuff it's all outside of the of north america but what do you think the metagame starts doing what do you think people start wanting to play because Whenever somebody looks at tournament results, their head starts changing, you know? They start saying, well, they played this, I have to play this, I have to beat that, etc. So what what do you guys think the reactions are at first? It's going to be a non-zero amount of Rapid Strike Urshifus in the day two if at least one of those regionals. There will at least be one Rapid Strike Urshifu in day two, because at least one player will be willing was... to risk it and play it and make somehow make day two. I was thinking about it, and I was like, oh, you can beat uh, Mew if you go, like, rapid flow to genesex and then like uh thing but if they have Oracle, it doesn't work right so that's how tord was beating it with his melanie or she at uh, uh, first because people weren't playing Oracle when mew first came out right yeah or choreo just ruins you right you um yeah there or were Corio, there were actually rapid strike urshi in day two of slc um i'm gonna go check now on limitless one was uh so the sandaconda v max deck desert storm was originally made by Frank Persick. Um, but he had, I believe, two Flygon and a 1 1 Rapid Strike Urshivu V Max in his deck. Mm. Whereas Instead Charlie and Charlie it. played uh two one Sanda and just one Flygon. And I believe somebody uh took Frank's deck. Um so it was Arceus Beedrill Flygon Rapid Strike Urshifu. Uh but somebody also played Arceus Urshifu Moltrace. Uh, actually two people day two with Arceus Urshifu Moltres. Uh, not including I'll have to try that one out. Not including the one that. that was uh Frank Persex with the one one. So we already did have some Rapid Strike Urshifu showing up. Um and I even heard people telling me, you know, they were testing Rapid Strike Urshifu and felt that it was pretty good against the meta, but they just couldn't bring it knowing that thirty percent day one would be um would be Mew. You know, they couldn't just bring ra straight Rapid Strike knowing that. Um so Rapid Strike Urshifu, I think, is a natural reaction to what happened in SLC. Um, you know, we had one, two, three, four, technically five Inteleon engine decks in top eight, if you count uh Andre, who got uh pushed up by the DQ. Um, yeah. and so Inteleon engine decks are typically preyed upon by RS Urshi. Uh we saw zero mana fee in any relevant decks that i saw shared at least from day two um so rabbit trigger shifu v max definitely makes sense the fighting weakness the inteleon engines etc um anything else that you think is kind of a natural reaction uh rabbit strike mal i think i haven't tested but in theory 
which have really good matchups against metagame. But from what I've heard, the deck seems incredibly hard, so I don't know how people are going to start playing it. Because it seems like you need a lot of reps with it to play it correctly, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah, so there were two Rapid Strike Mallies in top 16. One Nathaniel, who played the Chinchino version, and Gabe Shumway, who played the Inteleon version. Um, I think a lot of the people testing in the community had a similar like uh pipeline where they started out okay chinchino's better and then eventually got to the point where they thought inteleon's better and that's where i'm at and that's where a lot of people i've talked at are now but i know nathaniel said he also agreed inteleon was probably better but had tested the chinchino version so much and didn't want to change so even playing what he admitted was probably a suboptimal version got top 16 and then yep. gabe shumoy finished in 11th you have thoughts on the deck nick I have zero experience with or against it, but it sounds good in theory, other than being, you know, a single prize deck that's susceptible to breaking. Right. I, I think the deck is actually, like, really consistent at doing what it's supposed yeah, to do. Yeah, it's weirdly, <laughs> and Narcy's one brick. It's more like their turn two just isn't good enough sometimes. Yeah, the turn they two. They always have a supporter. They always have a supporter. Yeah, the turn two they don't put out enough damage most of the time to do anything like respectable. And then from turn three on you're in danger of getting one shot. Yeah. Fine. Because they have to take six knockouts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I did tie, uh, I did tie Nathaniel in round nine and it was because game two, he, I think that like, if you don't play perfectly with Malamar, he would have lost the game, but because he played perfectly, he didn't fall for my trap of going, like having a 60 HP Pokemon, so I could go quick shooting net of my Italian, quick shooting, and then use Aqua Bolt to knock out that for two prizes. But you played around it properly. Nice. So let's say uh, you two were attending Liverpool this weekend. Let's say you, you live in Europe um, <laughs> and you've been playing Wish. Malamar already for a week and you're really good at it. Um, would you be teching a Manaphy in this weekend? Uh, no. I don't know. Probably not. Like, but I know Nathaniel, he lost his win in for top eight to Jolteon. So maybe he would. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. I yeah. don't think it's worth it. I'm the just, card doesn't say Rapid Strike. I'm just yeah, wondering. you had to play all Rapid Strike cards. I'm just wondering because of Rapid Strike or Shifu VMAX uh, coming out into the metagame. Wait. I guess in Sincino it's fine, but definitely not in Inteleon. Yeah, no, okay. not in Inteleon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and since you know you can just trade it away, so it's fine. But okay, not and get it out of your pool of cards. You don't have to bench it. Um, so yeah. just take the L to Rapid Trigger Shifu V Max. You think? If you're playing Inteleon, yeah. Or, if you're playing since you know you should play it. Yeah. Or do you think maybe the Rapid Strike matchup isn't just a loss? It's pretty bad. Time's two weeks, so you could probably beat it with. Because what I'm anyways. thinking is, if you're yeah, going in, so maybe would you just not play this with the goal of winning the event? If you think good players, I think Mount work can win the event. I think Mount can win the event. And get so you don't think Urshifu V Max can also win the event? I think no. it can. I think it can. It's just <laughs> I think more likely Malamar would win the event. I because I don't think anyone will is, is well, willing to take the risk of playing Urshifu. What if Teddy might play Urshifu? So maybe. Well, what what if your what if your Urshifu deck beats Mew? What if you're playing? I I uh that I don't believe you're playing that you're testing against Mew, and so you're testing against 59 Energy and a Mew V. Yeah. Okay. I don't. <laughs> I mean. I I think you can match like 40 60, but you're not consistently beating Mew. Well, I'm not just talking straight or Shifu. I'm talking like yeah, if I you're understand. playing with Baby Molt Trace or Big Molt Trace or yeah, you're, pl you're just playing like the Arceus Speed oh, I, I'll, I'll with say one, I've been one. thinking about this. I've been thinking Me about too. this. Yeah, I okay. can't make it work yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know uh, Zapdos TCG posted a list the other day of Ur Urshifu V Max with Baby Molt instead of Big Molt, um, so I took a look at that. Um, there's also a lot of Japanese lists if you just look around Ho -Oh News, PokemonCardLab.com, things like that. So, um, yeah. So, moving on to the other Arceus decks, we already touched Malmar V Max and whatnot. Um, but what do you think about, uh, Charlie Lockyer's deck? Not even necessarily just the Sandaconda version, but just that Beedrill template. I, huh. I like the deck a lot. I think it's really cool, but I still not sold that it beats Mew consistently enough. I like, haven't seen uh, it play at all. I haven't seen it play any games. Got it. 
Um, how about Gengar? Would you guys play Gengar to an event? Either version? Oh, uh, no. No. I wouldn't play it, but it's a good enough deck. Okay, I feel like there's been, like, kind of a stigma around Gengar VMAX, right? Like... There has been, been a portion of stigma. Out, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. like, the top players say Gengar VMAX is bad, and then people on Twitter who's Gengar's favorite Pokemon... Gengar is their favorite Pokemon say, no, Gengar VMAX is good, it won a regional... Um, I st I wouldn't I wouldn't play Gengar Houndoom to an event, but I would consider. I Arceus like Gengar, Gengar Houndoom more. Really, interesting. Yeah. Why, why is that? Surge Owner is very good right now. Okay. Surge Owner is very good. If you play like two or three Surge Owner, I mean like a three-two Gengar, like you will be beating a lot of decks. How about you, Nick? Houndoom or Arceus? I wouldn't personally play either. Like I said, if you had to play um, one. If I had to, Ooh, I like Arceus. Like, One thing I like Arceus. about the Arceus deck that you played is that he's all fighting weak. Yeah, that's a bad point. That's a bad part. But what? Well, what but I... so is Gengar because your only non-fighting weak guy is Stone Journey. Right. At least you have single prizes though, right? That you can. Yeah, you could probably play more Stone Journey. I guess I don't know. What I like about Drew's list is it has no bad starters. It only plays yeah. four Arceus, three Gengar, and three badoof so like that uh, was very consistent yeah so like you don't have your crowbat your luminion your tech single prizer things getting st in, stuck in the active so I turn one is good. rough though <laughs> turn one is rough yeah because <laughs> you have nothing to retreat into or just getting your basics what? down i think ian means oh i haven't yeah yet. or even getting energy out like drew had trouble against that with me against me okay i didn't watch like the entire finals match so i haven't seen the deck play a full game um so one of the other decks that we didn't talk about is jolteon v max um yeah. what's your opinions on that in the meta game either what was it for slc or what is it going forward worst path of the peak deck compared to rcs and telling on that's how i see it because how you're beating mew is path of the peak you might as well be playing a better version of the path deck yeah, I always hated Jolteon. Okay. It's so not, it's obviously gets the results. Like, yeah. It's obviously not a bad deck. It's not something I would ever play. Right. I think half yeah. of its results do come from being a Marnie Path deck and that just getting you there sometimes and it being a functional yeah. deck. Um, yeah. And then you also have the fact that any decks that are uh, poor against bench damage. So, like, if you can, like, boss and knock out two Sobbles, boss and knock out two Houndors. Uh, things like Malamar, things like Baby Dark, if that's around, like those are also just some free situations and free matchups that the deck gets. I mean, I hope play people play uh, Jolteon because my deck bodies. It, <laughs> I don't know. I can take, I think it does. I can take nine prizes with one guy. <laughs> that's not true. Yeah, I can take six prizes with one. Guy. That's, that's the uh, the caped Zapdos, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um. So, if the metagame adds in some fighting stuff, we got people working on Urshifu VMAX, the Sandaconda gets more popular, some YouTubers play, I know uh, Little Dog Fury played Arceus Stonejourner VMAX in some online events, Stone Baby Stonejourners in Gengar, Single Strike Urshifu Umbreon, um, is Mew just the play again? Yes. Probably. Probably. I believe Mew is currently the best deck still and that if someone gets the, the like enough reps with it they should be able to win the tournament or at least have a good shot of it i think last week it was just an issue of if most of the players playing Mew, you you're unlucky or didn't have enough reps with it yeah we saw some top players or some of what i would call like the elite players like azul um and caleb getimer uh playing Mew v max but we also saw many players playing Arceus variants. Uh, many yeah. top players playing Arceus variants. Or... I don't think there was a world where it won SLC, but yeah. I think going forward, it's still good. Yeah, I, I think part of the reason... Oh, sorry. No, 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 you go ahead, Ian. I think part of the reason why Ar it was a weird meta, because I also think people mostly played Arceus, because it was the first event back, and you played a deck that felt like you had more stuff in your control than you. Mm -hmm. Like, this is like Buzzrock 2018 all over again. Because mm -hmm. Buzzrock was the best deck in format, and the best players were willing to play a risky deck, as you saw, 
like there was a good player winning every single regional or IC with Buzzrock. I think Muse can be very similar to this in that it will now for now on be dominating for a long time. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to see. And do you think the uh, the population thing I was talking about earlier will, co will come into play for uh, Liverpool and Sao Paulo, where we have like uh, a less amount of groups of elite players over there, and if they just all pick to play Mew, then win. The captain is right winning. Okay. Yeah, those are those are both going to be small. Like Liverpool is going to be only two hundred, right? Like, uh, I think Liverpool has four hundred and thirty three people registered but Little. they don't know how many masters that is so it's okay, probably like 350 masters. 300 masters yeah. maybe. um that's yeah. what i've been told yeah. at least it, i mean i think whatever you know the limitless group brings will probably win like or you know whatnot yeah and that so, yeah that has a good you, chance you know, if they play if they play four four rcs that'll <laughs> <laughs> you uh four four rcs or trevin and v max BDIF. I read that card. It sounds awful. You heard it here first. The card folks. is very good. So oh, it's man. winning Liverpool. <laughs> no, it's not even making the top thirty-two. Have you read the card? Yes. They score tens of orders. It does four hundred. <laughs> not the best I can format. Is it your opponent supporters? Yes. Yeah. Your opponent. You play six supporters. He's trolling, and he doesn't actually think Trevor is good. <laughs> Um, oh, uh, real quick, is Arceus Duraladon still a deck or no? Oh, no. <laughs> it's just strictly better. Okay. Okay, so now... It was, it was never a deck. Yeah, it, it, I think it no. was a great play by Riley because he played a very consistent deck into an unknown meta game where nobody would be teching for Duraladon. I thought the deck was good until I until someone told me like a day after that event that you had Shred. Oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah. That changed my mind very I had I had also told somebody that and that they had the same experience. <laughs> yeah, because like the other three top four of that event was like Dark Box. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, I do not I don't take the same with like random online events. I, I don't take them very seriously. Right, right. So like I'll look at overall meta yeah, meta statistics for you know the last month of online events, but never like an individual right event. to see what people are playing and what's popular, but not necessarily. Yeah, it's like oh okay, I beat this deck, this deck, and this deck. But not so. necessarily to see like deck lists. Yeah, I use that to for. see it's trends. Like, deck lists. Yeah, trends. Like they'll understand what deck lists look like, so I can have like an idea of everyone's playing. Like that's yeah. why I did for Salt Lake City, for example. Right. Yeah. So not necessarily. Oh look. The rant won an online event. You see, yeah, I don't care. you see, right? You see, uh, oh, a lot of people are playing Arcus and Teleon. So, right, 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 right. Yeah. So, closing thoughts going forward. Um, if you were going to Liverpool, or let's say we had another North American regional this weekend, um, actually, we'll say two weekends. Give yourself some time to test a new deck, prepare make your list good um if we had another north american regional in two weekends without liverpool in between uh what would be a couple decks that you were working on uh mu v max and then some rc deck whatever three three or three two line v max you want in it i would just play the same thing how about if you're uh, a new player looking to get your first day two mu v max or Gengar. Gengar also. Probably one of the Gengar variants. I don't know. That's a tough one. Yeah. Let's like let's say a new very skill Let's say to um maybe not a new player, but someone who's been playing the whole pandemic, but not in has is new to real life. Um sure. and is willing to test for a week or two. Uh and wants to make a day two. If you're good with Mew, you can play Mew. If you're good with you know, whatever you're good with. So comfort. I think Gengar, I think about it again. I think Gengar V Max single strike with like two stone joiners is really good. Sounds good, yeah. Because you auto win Mew mostly, so you might and you have like fifty fifties against like everything else. So it seems pretty good. Yeah, I mean Gengar was first seed going into top eight, second seed going into day two. It's yeah. definitely a good deck. But the Gengar even the I, I talked to Zachary and 
and Gabe, and they were like, this deck sucks. Like, I'm like, your top eight obviously can't suck that bad. Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel that way about Gengar Hound, dude. <laughs> like, well, like it wins but it's game. very simple deck. It's basically, it's like a theme deck as well. Like, yeah, if you're a new player, I would recommend it. Yeah, I think top players think Gengar Hound Doom sucks because they have to just play a research and then dr play whatever cards they got. So like, and that's going to win games if you, if your deck is built to win games. But a lot of times, a top player or a player that's experienced, I should say, wants a deck with a lot of options and want. So they want a deck list that was built kind of meticulously and has options within it, and then also yeah. presents options during your turn. Um, kind of like your guys' deck had multiple types of attackers, things like the what was it five one one energy split um six, six one one, one. Two. um yeah yeah so the the unique energy splits that we haven't seen for two years because everything people aren't innovating like that online the multiple yeah. different attackers um that's like the kind of deck that a player wants to have that can they can express their skill with um so i i, I agree with you guys i think muv max and gengar variants are really good for players returning to irl or that haven't yeah. ever played irl I mean, majors yeah because you don't want to yeah unless you are so confident in yourself in like an arceus variant but there's a lot it's a lot to take in especially when you're getting those physical mechanics down for the first time with the shuffling and time management and whatnot um oh one, one last question did you guys feel like you were rusty on your time management did you have to avoid ties by skipping yeah. yes yes oh. um i i just like I didn't realize how long Italian takes to play. Like I think my ties, I only missed. I should have probably won my first tie, but I didn't scoop game two early enough, and I took too long on my Italians because I thought I'd have enough time. That's the only time I thought I took too long. Other than that, I felt fine. I checked all six prizes every game, and I only went to time twice. Cool. And uh, did you tie both of those times? Well, one was. A tie. Okay, so twice in Swiss and then once in and top four went to time. Okay. But that was, yeah, top four. I was just playing slower because, like, the stream it was my first time on. Right. Stream. And you guys have 75 minutes. You and yeah, Finn were yeah. both taking time that would have been seen inappropriate in a day one match, but was fine in a 75 minute stream match. Yeah. I still did get a warning for pace of play hmm. in top four. But yeah, I, I mean, I was just. I tried not to let the stream get to me. It's but hard. It, was definitely, it definitely still did a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I'm glad it was, because looking back, like I saw my mistakes, and I was like, okay, now I know what to do next time. So Yeah, for sure. Well, um, I think we can probably wrap up there, unless you guys have any other topics um, that you wanted to bring up. I think so. All right, cool. So uh, closing, uh, closing shout-outs, Ian, and then Nick. All right. Uh... I'll sort of say shout out to uh, my team, Team SMC, and uh, shout out to everyone, you know, cheering me on, the Twitch chat, and also um, follow me on Twitter, Ian underscore underscore Rob. I'm doing coaching, and I'm taking on applicants, so uh, please let me know if you're interested, and uh, DM me. All right, um, follow me on Twitter at Nicholas Moffitt with one T and then a two at the end. Um, I'm also going to start offering coaching. I'm working on setting up like a professional website for it, but for now, just DM me, I guess. Awesome, guys. And I'll leave your uh, Twitter links in the description down below. Um, hope you all enjoyed watching this video and you could be on the lookout for Ian and Nicholas uh, making waves at some future major events, hopefully. And uh, if you're interested in coaching, I also offer coaching, but Ian and Nick are great. Uh, great coaches as well great players that can offer their knowledge to you so uh be sure to subscribe to the channel for daily pokemon tcg content you can check out my sponsors in the description down below and everything else mentioned in this video leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed and we'll see you next time here on celio's network